Today on BRS TV we have our third episode in the aquarium filtration series which will focus on protein skimmers. Protein skimmers are designed to clarify the water and remove organics before they have a chance to break down into nitrate and other nutrients. We'll go over how a skimmer works, how to select the best one for your needs, and some maintenance tips. At its heart, every protein skimmer in one way or another is just a way to rapidly mix air and water together. During this process, organic molecules attach to the surface of the air bubbles and form a stable foam, which flows over into the collection cup to be removed from the aquarium. These organic molecules are typically made up of partially broken down foods and fish waste. The ability to remove these components before they break down into nitrate or other pollutants makes protein skimmers one of the most effective ways to maintain low nutrients and a very important filter on a reef tank. While it certainly is possible to have a successful reef tank without a skimmer, it is more difficult. A skimmer will drastically reduce the dependency on water changes as your primary nutrient export method. A highly efficient skimmer will also help carry you through those inevitable periods where work or family needs result in temporary lapses in your standard maintenance cycle. There are a ton of different designs that have been developed over the years, but these days almost all of them are known as needle wheel or pinwheel skimmers, which have an impeller to whisk together air and water into a dense foam. I think the primary reasons why most of the skimmers these days use a design like this is because they're not only very effective at removing organics, but also energy efficient, add very little heat to the tank, generally quiet, utilize small compact designs, and they're easy to operate. For the most part, this type of skimmer comes in four basic designs. A space saver design where the pump is found under or inside the skimmer body itself. This type of design is perfect for those with limited amounts of space, which is most of us. There are also models with the pump mounted externally, which is more common. They do take up a bit more room, but they can be more efficient skimmers because they have a larger reaction area inside the skimmer body. They often use larger pumps and typically have less turbulence within the skimmer itself. There are also hang-on models for those of you that don't have a sump or room for a skimmer. Historically hang-on options were not considered to be very effective options, but they've come a long way in recent years, and many of them are probably approaching the same effectiveness as similar model in sump skimmers. There are a few downsides. Many people consider them ugly. If they overflow, will likely be on your floor, and some models seem to be more likely to release bubbles into the tank. The last type is what's known as a recirculating skimmer, where the pinwheel pump is attached to the side in a closed loop. Most skimmers installed externally out of the sump will be a recirculating skimmer, but you can use them internally as well. They require a separate pump to feed the skimmer with water. One of the major advantages of using this type of skimmer is you can control the contact time and tank turnover much easier by adjusting the flow rate of the feed pump. The recirculating design also maintains a much larger volume of air in the skimmer body. You can see the difference here with these two skimmers. Both are using the same pump, but the recirculating model clearly has a much larger volume of air. Selecting a skimmer can be a fairly daunting task because there's so many options. Luckily, there are skimmers out there that will fit basically everyone's needs. I think the first step is to set some quick goals for the purchase and a budget. I think for the most part, you can categorize most skimmer lines as good, better, and best. Good being most of the first tier products produced in China. Most of these products do a good job and for the money spent on them, they're a great value. Reef Octopus is one of the better examples. They've been producing affordable skimmers that perform well for a long time now and really refine the process of producing skimmers in this price range. The Octopus NW series is basically a staple of the entry-level skimmer market and it's pretty hard to compete with them in this price range. The focus is really on getting the most performance possible at an affordable price point. They achieve this by using their own branded pumps and basically only including materials and features that are absolutely required. There won't be a ton of bells and whistles. The next set of skimmers is what I would call the better category. This is another segment where Octopus does pretty well. The build quality of the Diablo and Super Series are similar to the NW, but there are feature upgrades like these space-saving designs. The major gains are in the pumps used, 
By using higher quality pumps, they're able to get much more air into the body of the skimmer, which results in rather big improvements in the efficiency of the skimmer and volume of organics removed. I personally use a Super Reef Octopus line on several tanks and been very happy with the performance. One of the nice features is the bubble blaster pump that they use is very quiet. Recently, Vertex entered the better category of the skimmer market with a unique approach. They have been designing and producing skimmers in conjunction with Royal Exclusive in the best category for quite a while. Vertex recently released the Omega Skimmer line, which is a separate venture produced at their factory in China. The result is a product that features most of the German design elements, but at a reasonable price point. These elements include an attention to detail, quality materials, and a build quality just not found with other products in this range. The heavyweight acrylic and PVC build using reef safe titanium screws are things you only see in much more expensive skimmers. There are features which allow you to tune the air injection, ports for ozone, and custom made mounts and impeller housings for respected pumps like the CJ line. Most of the skimmers in the better range still use rubber O rings for the skimmer cup neck. The Omega is custom threaded. While this might seem like a nice to have rather than a required feature, most of us have a very small amount of room to get that cup off, and it can be difficult to get it off without spilling skim aid all over the place. Threading the cup neck allows for an installation with very minimal clearance and really easy removal. I think this is just an example of what comes from a company when they're really passionate about reefing, and they apply that passion to the products they're producing. On top of that, basically every German design product has to match form to function, and there's no question here. The design elements of the Omega series results in a really sharp looking product. The last tier of skimmer is what I would call best. Most of these lines are produced in Europe, particularly in Germany. Currently, the Vertex Alpha and Bubble King lines by Royal Exclusive are probably the top contenders. There's no question, these products aren't cheap, but that's pretty much the case when you want the best of anything. The products in this best category are typically the best built, most efficient, and quietest products available. Since most of the best category skimmer manufacturers are located in Europe, one of the biggest differentiators is selecting one that has a strong presence in the U.S. with good support options should you ever need replacement parts or help with the equipment. When you are shopping in this price range, it's probably a good idea to send an email, chat, or quick phone call to your preferred vendor to ask them who not only produces the best product, but who is also most likely to offer high quality after purchase support. So by this point, you probably know what category skimmer you're looking for and just need to select a size or model. My recommendation is to use the manufacturer suggestion as a very rough guideline. A better route is to set a budget and measure the space you have available. Look at all the options that fit inside that budget and space constraints and get the best skimmer available from those options. There are two basic opinions on selecting a properly sized skimmer for a tank. My personal opinion is, within reason, it's almost impossible to have a too effective skimmer on a tank. A large efficient skimmer is frequently one of the key components of avoiding major algae outbreaks and maintaining a long-term successful reef tank. The other opinion frequently voiced is some corals actively feed on the organic matter and nutrients, which is a true statement. My personal take on this still is, the cleanest tank in the planet is 100 times dirtier than most ocean reefs. There's basically no chance that any skimmer you select is going to be efficient enough to come anywhere near the naturally low levels of organics and nutrients found in most ocean reefs. There's one thing I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, and that's the ocean is an effective reef building habitat. So in most cases, that's what I'm trying to emulate. Well, it certainly is possible or even likely that in some cases these nutrients or some of the trace elements a skimmer could remove would have resulted in somewhat faster coral growth. But most of these things also feed algae growth. I think most experienced reefers with a long-term successful reef tank would gladly trade some gains in coral growth for significantly reducing the long-term chances of an algae outbreak. A small reduction in potential coral growth is pretty much never the cause of a tank teardown, whereas persistent algae outbreaks are probably the number one cause of tank failures and shutdowns. 
Ongoing skimmer maintenance generally revolves around removing the skimmer cup to empty it and cleaning all of the organics out of the neck. You should also clean the main body from time to time. I would like to point out here what you're cleaning is literally broken down fish poop and decaying food. If you value your health or marriage, you might want to do this in a laundry sink rather than your kitchen sink where you put things that you eat off of. While many reefers are fairly brave, for the same reason that I bring a bag when I walk my dog, you'll probably want to wear some gloves as well. For those of you that generally try to avoid touching stuff like this at all cost, there are some cool self-cleaning devices on the market. Vertex makes one called the Vectra, which is basically a rotating squeegee which keeps the neck clean for you. Keeping the neck consistently clean like this will also typically result in significant performance gains as well. Well, I'm sure Vertex would prefer you buy their skimmer as well. The Vectra is fairly universal and can be used on most brands and types of skimmers. Most models also have a drain port on the bottom of the cup, which you can send to a container. This often makes it a lot easier to empty the skim aid out of the cup when it's full. We should also note that the liquid removed from the skimmer is salt water, so over time it is important to add some salt water to replace this. If you have your skimmer tuned to a wet skim aid, this might be fairly often. That wraps up today's episode. If you'd like to be notified of future episodes, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit BulkReefSupply.com and sign up for our newsletter. Thank you for watching BRS TV.